Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will be looking at creating a machine learning algorithm that can predict the medical insurance charges of a person based on the given data. The data set used for this video is available on Kaggle and GitHub and I will be adding links to it in the description below. Before moving forward, please do hit the subscribe button and drop a like as it encourages me to keep making new content. Don't forget to turn on bell notification to stay updated each time I upload a new video. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So what we are doing here is we are importing pandas for basic data operations, we are importing matplotlib and cbond for creating the plots, we are importing style to set the style for the graphs, then we are importing train test split to split the data into training and testing sets and then we are importing linear regression to perform linear regression on our data. Now let's read the CSA file. Now let's see the data in the insurance file using the head function. Using the head function will give us the first 5 rows in our data. Now if you want to get the shape of the data set we can use a shape attribute. So this gives us the shape of the data and if you want to get more information about the data set we can use the info method. So as you can see this gives us the column name, the null value count, the data type of the entries and from this we can understand that we have both categorical data and numerical data in a data set. And as we can see there are no null values in this data set. However, if you want to check for null values explicitly then we can use the isNull method. This is how you check for null values explicitly. Similarly, the info method gives us a list of all the column names. However, if you want to print the column names, we can do it as follows. df.columns and this will give a list of all the columns in our data. Now let's use a describe function to get the statistical details of the numeric data in our data set. And as we can see, this returns us the min, the max, mean, etc. of the numeric entities in our data set. Now let's visualize the categorical data in our data set starting with the gender column. So first let's set a figure size. And let's set a style for a figure. And now we are going to plot a count plot using cbonds. sns.countplot. So what we are doing here is we are setting a count plot to get the count of all the genders and our data will be the data frame. And now let's add a title to our plot. And finally plot.show. And if you run it, we can get a gender distribution in our data set. Now this indicates that there are almost equal number of males and females in our data. Now let's analyze the details of the smokers in our data set. So similarly, Seaborn's count plot. So we are setting a count plot for the smoker column and our data will be the data frame. And let's add a title. And we can get a distribution of the smokers in a data set. As we can see, our dataset has a majority of non-smokers. To make things a bit more neat, I'm going to set the figure size. Plot dot figure size, just as we did before. Okay. Now let's see the count of people from each region in our dataset. So we are again setting a count plot. 
and this time our data will be the region data will be from the data frame and let's add a title now that we have account plot showing the distribution of the different categorical columns let's plot them against a target value that is charges so let's first plot the cost versus the region so here we're setting a bar plot so here the x data will be our region and the y data will be charges and the data will be from a data frame and let's add a title From this we can infer that the people living in the southeast region has slightly higher medical charges compared to people in the other regions. Similarly, let's see the medical charges for the smokers. So here our X data will be the smoker column, the Y data will be the charges and our data will be taken from the data frame and now let's run it. And as we can see the medical costs for the smokers are very high. Let's now visualize the medical costs for smokers taking into account the gender also. So let's modify this code. And from this we can infer that the male smokers have a very high medical insurance cost. Now instead of using bar plots, we can also visualize our data using box and plots. Box and plots are an advancement of box plots and are designed to visualize the data more accurately. Now just for demonstrating the box and plot, I will be plotting all the box and plot as subplots. Now you can also plot it separately as we did for the bar plots. So what we are doing here is we are setting a subplot of 1 by 3 which means it will have one row with three graphs in it and we are setting a figure size of 15 by 5 and then we are sharing the y axis over here then we added a title to our plot then we are setting the first box in plot which is smoker versus charges at axis 0 and then we are setting the second box in plot which is sex versus charges at axis 1 and then we are setting the third box in plot at axis 2 which is region versus charges. Now let's plot a histogram using the numerical data. So now we have a plot showing the distribution of the different numerical data. Now if you want to know more about histograms or other visualization techniques, you can check out my visualization playlist. I'll add a link to it in the description below as well. So next, let's find the correlation between the different attributes. But before that, let's convert the categorical variables into numerical format. So first let's use a head function to see the data. 
There are different methods by which you can convert categorical values into numerical values such as using label encoders or by using pandas to get dummies or by simply converting the strings into integer variables. For keeping it simple, here I am going to convert the strings into integers. So what we are doing here is, we are searching for each categorical variable in each column and then converting them into a numerical variable. For example, in the first column, we are searching for male and then converting it to zero. Similarly, we are converting females into one. And for the smoker column, we are converting yes to one and no to zero. Likewise, we are doing it for the region column also. And let's run the cell. Now let's use head function again to see the updated data. Bf dot head. And as we can see, all the categorical columns has been converted. Let's now proceed to create a heat map of our data to see the attributes that have a high correlation. To do that, we are going to use the Seaborn's heat map. If you want to know more about creating and adding style to heat maps using Seaborn's, you can check out my tutorial on Seaborn's where I explain this topic in detail. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot the heat map. Now we are setting the annotation equal to true to see the correlation values inside the heat map. So the lighter values indicates high correlation and darker values indicates a very low correlation. So from the heat map, we can see that the smoker attribute has a very high correlation with the target variable and the gender attribute has a very low correlation with the target variable. Now that we have done some data exploration, let's proceed to build the model. To do this, first we need to split the data and then separate it into training and testing data. So for the X data, we are dropping the target column and the sex column as it has a very low correlation. We are setting axis equal to 1 to indicate that we are removing a column. And then for our Y data, we are adding the target column. Now that we have X and Y data, let's split the data into training and testing data. Here I am taking a test size of 30 percentage. Now let's print the size of the training and testing data. And now we have the shape of the training and testing data. Now let's create a linear regression model. To do that first we have to load the linear regression model. Now let's fit the training data on the linear regression model. And then let's create a variable pred to store the predicted values. 
we are doing the prediction on the x test data now to see how well the model fits the data we are going to calculate the r2 score so to do that let's import the library first then let's print the r2 score of the model So the R2 score of the model will be calculated of the actual Y test value and the predicted value. So Y test and predicted value. The R squared is an indication of how well the model fits a given data. So a higher R2 value indicates a better fit. However, in some cases, a good model may also show a lower R2 score. Now here we have a relatively good model as we have a higher R2 score. We can also plot a graph to see how well our model predicts. To do this we can create a plot of the actual versus predicted values. So let's create a scatter plot. So now we have a plot of the actual versus predicted values. Now that we have trained and tested our model, let's predict the insurance cost for a new customer. So let's create a sample data. We are setting it at an index 0 and let's convert it into a pandas data frame and let's print the data frame. So now let's predict the medical insurance cost for this particular customer. And let's print the predicted cost. And we have the medical insurance cost for the new customer. Now let's see what happens if the person was a smoker assuming all the other conditions are the same. So let's go ahead and change this value. And as we can see, the medical cost becomes very high which corresponds to the data in the given data set. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an idea of creating a health insurance cost prediction system using linear regression. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.